Welcome to the Red V TV preview show, supported by A Star Recruitment for the 2021 season. As we look ahead to the big one, it is the Challenge Cup final 2021 from Wembley Stadium, where Castleford Tigers will take on your mighty St. Helens. Kevin, you've not dressed for the occasion. You've been digging around in a charity shop there, lad. Have you not? You've got to put your Wembley suit on. Look, if you'll be my date, I've even brought you a, a flower that goes with the tag. <laughs> You're joking. I'm currently sat in this in my A star top and a pair of orange Burnley shorts. Do you reckon I, should come I am dressed for the occasion. Do you reckon I should come to Wembley dressed like this? Yes, 100%. With it going to be about 28 degrees on the day, I would love to see that. I tell you what, I've put some timber on in this lockdown. <laughs> I put it on and my missus went, that doesn't fit you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. Better getting that off her than anybody else, though. But it is the most important game of the season. Uh, Saints, a long, long time without a Challenge Cup um, and a real massive opportunity to bring one home on, on this Saturday afternoon. Yeah, um, as you say, it's a big one. 2008, I think we were wearing this jersey here when we last won it. Um, forget about that cup final a couple of years ago. Absolutely horrific performance from us and Warrington, just had our number that day. Um, and that's it. I'm not sure we will get a better chance. And that's no disrespect to, to Castleford, but they've not played a game since the 24th of June. Um, you can't help but feel when when you're going into a game on a pitch the size of Wembley with the heat, that kind of having them minutes under your belt will do you a lot better than than kind of being rested up. And I know that they might rest a couple of knocks and bumps and bruises and that, but but you need them them that fitness and them minutes under your belt. The only member of the Saints squad who has tasted uh, Challenge Cup success is James Roby, obviously 2006, 2007, 2008. But 12 of the squad who are likely to be on display on Saturday will, will have felt the hurt of that defeat in 2019. Just how much will that spare them on to make amends? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You're not going to want to feel that again, are you? Uh, you're not going to want to feel like the crushing devastation of the final hooter uh, and realising that, that one of the few chances you get to win a cup in your career... Um, and I know as a club at Saints, we're, we're quite good at staying up at the top end of the table and getting to finals and what have you. But you, you're not going to want to feel that once the once the final hooter goes and the, the kind of realisation that you're not going to be picking up a winner's medal. You're not going to be parading the cup. You're not going to be in the, all the newspapers with headlines with your name on it. Yeah, they're not going to want to feel that again. So I think that'll spur them on massively. I think after that defeat as well, I think they stayed on the pitch, didn't they? Um, yeah. And they had, a, they had a conversation, made themselves watch Warrington celebrate in front of their fans afterwards uh, and to get that that feeling of hurt, um, which obviously then spared us on to, to grand final glory at the end of the, of the 2019 season. So hopefully that will still be in the memory as well. But now we've overcome, we know how to win big games and hopefully that experience is what's going to see us home. Yeah, that's it. We, I think even more so than that, possibly the grand final at the end of last season where you kind of, it's level pegging for a lot of that game and you win it in the, the last minute. That gives you a lot more um, than, say, winning the grand final in 2019. Because um, the grand final in 2019 was quite a one-sided game. Um, Salford stayed in it, but there was only one winner, wasn't there? Um, so, yeah, the lessons learned from that cup final, uh, the lessons that you take from the, the 2020 grand final, um, as you say, hopefully we can put them into a game plan and into a performance uh, on Saturday. And then, obviously, you've got the likes of, of Lachlan Coote, uh, Kevin Nagama. It's going to be their final chance in their careers to, to win a, a Challenge Cup at Wembley as well. Cheeky. Um, <laughs> probably true Bill Fast took him in the mix 
Possibly. Well, that's it. As we always say with the, the salary cap, it's it's something that, that kind of squeezes the best players out to other clubs, isn't it? And listen, you look, Hull KR have been in cup finals, not fared too well. Huddersfield have been in cup finals, not fared too well recently. Um, so, and, and sometimes you can't see past the big teams getting there and winning games, be it Hull, be it Leeds, be it Wigan, be it us. Um, you just you can't see past them sometimes. Um, so yeah, listen, they're going to want to go out. Lachlan Coote's going to want to go out, uh, three time champion and treble winner this season. Try and finish top of the league. Try and win the cup and try and win the grand final. Of course he is, um, because as you say, and again, it's no no disrespect to Hull KR, but they're not going to be challenging for a league leader shield, you wouldn't think. Not unless they, they make another couple of signings for that squad. Um, Theo Fire is the same. Listen, that's a project over at Huddersfield that might take two or three years to come to fruition um, as Ian Watson gets the right players in. So, yeah, of course, they're going to want to go out there and win just as much as Castleford are. But you'd hope that we've got that little bit of kind of impetus and kind of boost... Um, I'm glad you've got pants on and that boost to to kind of get over the line and again you can put the narrative of Castleford having um, Daryl Powell leaving and a couple of their players are going over to Warrington and they're going to want to go out cup winners but I, I don't know I just I'm hoping that kind of our players the last chance for them you put a lovely light on you there Dave or something. no 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 I'll tell you oh, right. um, yeah and you you kind of hope that, um, as I say, that the, the want to win trophies is bigger than bigger than Castleford's, um, and hopefully we can do that. That said, getting on to Castleford, are they now putting themselves in the mix of, of the the big? Obviously, we've talked about the traditional big teams who go to win trophies, and um, they've been in a grand final and now in a Challenge Cup final. They're, they're always there and thereabouts in the league. Um, they have obviously bad spells as well, with this obviously probably due to the size of the squad. But are they punching above their weight to be where they are and, and they're mixing it with the big boys? Um, I'm not sure about punching above their weight. Um, I think because they've gradually got better and better and better, um, and not kind of remember when sulfur through the kitchen sink at it, they've kind of not done that. Um, I think it'll be a struggle for them to keep hold of some of the better players. I know McShane signed a new deal, but he's coming, he's heading towards the end of his career rather than starting it. You hear all the rumours about Truman going. Um, so, I, I, yeah, I think it's a bit unfair saying punching above the weight. They're probably one of the, if you class out your top four, who you expect to be there and thereabouts as a, as, or top five as tier one teams. They're probably just in that next bunch down who could cause an upset, but haven't quite kind of pushed themselves into keep on finishing top three, top four, haven't they? Yeah. Um, and yeah. do you know what? When I say about punching above the weight, I'm not saying that with any disrespect. I'm saying that with plenty of admiration for them. But they probably don't have as big a, a cap to spend as, as everyone else or in terms of what they can offer in salaries. But they still find a way to get to finals. And that probably does say a lot for Daryl Powell. Um and the job he's done there. And obviously, again, for Daryl Powell, this Saturday marks his last opportunity to, to win a Challenge Cup at Wembley as well. Yeah, and he's going to be fired up for it. I think uh, just to go off on a little bit of a tangent, if David Rigby's watching, his word of the day for today is going to be disrespect because I think we've literally said no disrespect, no disrespect about four or five times now. So no doubt if I see him on uh, Saturday, A, he'll have a go at me for having a pair of shorts on because um, he always says he's never ready to see my legs. Uh, and B, he'll, he'll mention the word of the day as well. Um, Dave, why has it gone blue in your house? <laughs> um, a little bit dodgy, but yeah, Daryl Powell. Listen, he's gonna he's gonna want to fire his team up to to go out and, and cause an upset, isn't he? Um, I mean, we are favourites, and you'd think that <laughs> kind of look at the squads, which we'll come to in a minute. There's not that many of Castleford's who, who get into our starting seventeen. That said, um, Kev, do you think I? When we went in 2019, 
we were overwhelming favourites for that game. Nobody could see Saints getting beat the run they were on. I don't think we're as strong a favourite as we were then. I think this is a lot more of a, a 50-50 type game because we know that on their day, Castleford can upset us. We've seen what they did against Warrington in the semi-final. This game on Saturday is absolutely no given. Uh, War- uh, Castleford are more than capable of beating us at the weekend. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's it. Listen, individually, you'll have to excuse me. Oh, hair fever there. Thanks very much for that. Um, have you took your last yeah. roll yet, Kevin? Kevin? Double jabbed. Don't need to. I've been double jabbed, but just to be on the safe side. You're not pregnant, brilliant. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it, listen, as I say, individually, there's probably not many who would get in to our team or our 17. There's probably one, two, maybe three. But as a collective, they've got such good team spirit and they play the game how how you want it to be played. They kind of throw it about. I think they'll try and go wide. What's that, What's um, that? Kev? Sorry. Play the game how you want it to be played. What? Once a month when you can be bothered playing. <laughs> yes. Um, no, I think they'll throw it out wide. I think they'll try and, try and get it out to the wings. They'll try and exploit where we were weak um, last Friday. Um, but I, th- I think we've, as you say, we're, we're probably not as overwhelming favourites compared to 2019. But we should, still should be confident going into the game. Yeah, I think as a Saints fan, we should go into every game hoping, not necessarily expecting, but hoping to, yeah. to win. Um, so it, it, it is going to be a, a tough game. And that gets us onto it. Um, obviously, what we, we, I just raised then, uh, obviously Castleford decided to rest pretty much their entire squad last weekend to ensure, obviously, no risk of COVID, no risk of bans. Um, yet Saints, honour the integrity of the sport, go and play a full squad, which I actually disagreed with. And I think I said it on the previous show, I'd have put everybody in a bubble. But do you know what? The club have done the right thing for the sport. They've done the right thing for the club and the players. They've played a full team and we've been stung for it with the ludicrous ban to see on Matauti. When you see some of the ones that were shared on our social media, you, you sometimes you wonder how how decisions are made. And it, you know what? We could probably get a bit of clarity by trying to speak to people who've either been on the panel or are on the panel or whatever. But it's consistency, I think, that people want. Um, I mean, we saw Michael Carter put a, a, a statement out yesterday. Catalan have done the same today, um, echoing Michael Carter's thoughts. Um, I think we probably would have with Kev as a club as well if we weren't at Wembley on Saturday. I think we probably yeah. would have heard from Eamon McManus by now. Maybe we will after the weekend once we can't be accused of potentially influencing the officials. Um, yeah. But did you come away from that game last Friday thinking that any of those incidents, incidents or anything we saw in the game was going to result in a ban to players from either side because there was nothing controversial in that game at all? No. Um, no, to be honest. That's it. You wonder if people get cautioned because we got marched 10 a couple of times. You almost expect... Think Tom, did Tommy Makinson get a caution for question, questioning the ref? You expect that. You expect Mark Percival's name to appear on there because he was the one who got yellow carded because we got told next person who commits a foul is going to be uh, sent to the bin. You expect his name to appear, but there weren't too many. There weren't too many where you think, oh, hang on a minute, that could be... And it, there was possibly one where the feet were raised over the horizontal in a tackle, and you think, oh, that, that one might be on. I don't even know if it was. But you, you, you're getting players banned for incidents in a game which aren't even being given as a penalty. Now, mm-hmm. unless the um, disciplinary rotor was tr- changed on Tuesday, Adrian Morley was on that panel that gave them bans out. He was on commentary on the R League app, and, and I listened to it. In commentary, there was no mention of any of either of, of Matautia's tackles, hits at all. So they, they, they weren't obvious to, to the neutral eye either in the game. And for me, obviously, when you watch the instance, both players just get up and carry on as normal. There's no complaints from them. As Michael Carter said, 
it's a tough sport. Now, yeah. for me, you've took away probably the biggest opportunity and, and one of the biggest moments of a player's career on Saturday for an absolute nothing challenge, which didn't warrant it. And you're also robbing 45,000 fans who have paid £55 each of watching the two best sides and selecting their best 17 in action. Yeah. Well, one of my things is, why are, we, are they re-refing the whole game? Is that what they're doing, re-refing the whole game? Looking at every point of potential foul play and going through it again? Because if you're a ref and you're seeing stuff get banned because of uh, people getting banned because of like late contacts and stuff like that, but you've not seen it on a pitch or your team's not seen it on a pitch, do you walk away from that and think, we've not done a good job there? There's been six players handed out a ban or whatever it is from a game. I'm not saying for our game, but there's been a couple of players handed a ban. Did we miss that? And, it, so and should, we, case, Kev, should we be at that? If there's players coming out of games getting bans for incidents that the referees have completely missed during the game, is that saying the referees had a poor performance? Well, that's, that's what Are I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, well, that, that's what I'm saying. Are you, the ref's going to be turning away going, well, three players have got a game ban. I must have missed that because I've not given a penalty for it. I don't like the idea of going back and re ref in a full game. On the flip side, our referees just blatantly ignoring in any instance they see during the game because they they don't want to spoil the game during that 80 minutes because they think, ah, the, the discipline, you'll have a look at it on a Monday. They shouldn't be refing then. If that's if the thing is, I don't want to spoil the game, they shouldn't be refing. They should be refing to the laws and to their interpretation of the laws and just get on with it. Because I'm... otherwise, if, if you turn around and start saying, um, I don't want to spoil this game, then you're not refing the game fairly. You should it should just be out there. Listen, if that's a penalty, you give it. If it's not, you don't. Or if you're giving teams a bit of leeway, you give them a bit of leeway. But you don't start turning around thinking, "Well, I'm not going to send him off, even though it's probably a sending off offence." I'm just going to give him a yellow card because I don't want to spoil the game. If there's an incident in the cup final and a prop forward decides to lay out a half back, looking at the Ben Flower incident in the um, in the grand final a couple of years ago. That was a red card. That was ref perfectly. What happened is he sparked him out there. He's got to go two minutes into the game. There's no mucking about. There's no faffing about with penalties or, oh, I'll give him 10 minutes, give him the benefit of the doubt. It was ref properly. And that's, if refs aren't refing it properly, then they need to find another profession. I think the other thing for me is like, who is referring these incidences to the panel to actually look at to begin with? It, it seems to be a little bit faceless. We don't know who's re-watching it. Is it the referee from the from the game itself watches the 80 again and starts referring things over? Is it a bureaucrat sat in an office? There's a there's not a lot of transparency. Um, maybe we might get an answer and somebody might come along and tell us. It's a little bit bizarre. And then, obviously, you, you look at the, the football, say, like the European Championship semi-finals. Unless somebody is gets a red card in that game, everything is white for the final to ensure the best players are on display. Now, yes, players have got bans from that game, but does either of those, any of those incidents mean that a player should miss a final? Are any of them that serious? For me, they're not. I, I don't think they are. I don't, and I know we've got Saints tinted glasses on, but I still don't think they are. If that was Salford and they were playing Hull in the final, I'd be turning around saying exactly the same. There looks nothing in it. And that's it. If someone does come and turn around to us and say, well, this is how the picked and this is what you need to understand, then brilliant. Because I think we're looking at it from the vast majority of fans' point of view that we don't know what's going on with it. So the vast majority of fans don't know what's going on with it. So a little bit of transparency into how things are picked up and how things are judged, especially when you've got the... Have they got better camera angles? Or is it just the Our League camera? Because if it's just the Our League camera, how can you tell if anything is... Well, it's got, to, it's, got to, it's got to be that one camera, Kev, because there's no other cameras in the ground, unless they're using yeah. a CCTV in the back of the Wakey Flats. Um, well, it's, it's, it's utterly bizarre. And it says a lot when you see the charge sheet and you see 
the minute that the incident happened. And you've actually got to go and look at a replay of the game to find out to watch it for because it's that irrelevant and you've missed it completely during the game. But then obvious ones like Willie Isaac going into the back of Mark Percival gets nothing. Yeah. Utterly, utterly bizarre. But yeah. there's the moment. So see on out yet. Very, very unlucky to miss out. Right. Should we get to the squads, Kev? Yeah. First of all, the Saints squad. Um, isn't it pretty to see a big row of consecutive numbers? <laughs> it is. It is. Kill 11 anyway. Yeah. Well, uh, it's still all right, though. Still good to see, isn't it? Still good to see. Does the team pretty much pick itself? Oh, it depends what your team is. Depends what you're going to do with your bench. Shall um, I go with mine first? Go on, then, yeah. Your back seven is your one to seven. Well, yeah. actually, well, one to 11, start. I would go with ooh, Morgan Knowles and, and Louis to start. And then my bench would be Amor, Parsi, Wellsby and Bachelor. And I'd have Smith, Dodd, Sim and Norman to miss out. It's, and, and you could probably say it's a toss up between Louis and, and Joe Bachelor to start. Maybe you start Joe Bachelor because he's he's in that groove. He's played the last nine. And maybe you use Louis off the bench and maybe you either utilise him as, a, as another prop? Well, because it's going to be a hot day, I think he'll go with three forwards on the bench. I think if it was any other day, he'd potentially have Lewis Dodd on there and Jack Wellsby. I've gone ever so slightly different. Uh, one to nine starting. Um, Thompson, Bachelor and Knowles, your second row and loose forward. And then your bench is Matty Lees, uh, or oh, LMS starting, uh, uh, propping, sorry. Uh, Matty Lees, Parsi, Amor and Wellsby on the bench. I mean, three big lads. But I think LMS will start as prop, um, potentially come on in the second row or loose forward later on in the game. Because if we've got a rest roll bit, Morgan Knowles will probably dip into playing at nine. Um that's, that's my only worry. I think if this was five years ago with James Roby, you'd turn around and say, well, he's, he's definitely going to do 80 minutes and I wouldn't put it past him this time. But with him being that little bit older, you just think Lewis Dodd being on that bench would be a good option. But I think Jack Wellsby's versatility, the fact that he's played uh, in the pack this season, the fact that he can play any number between one and seven, uh, I think that gets him the nod, doesn't it? Yeah, I just think Castleford's strength is obviously their pack. Um, I just don't see us going light on the bench with Dodd and Wellsby. And I think mm. Wellsby gets the nod on the basis of the amount of positions he can cover. He can play full-back, yeah. he can play wing, he can play centre. He could even play in the halves. Um, so, for me, that's why Wellsby gets the nod over Lewis Dodd. And um, Listen, Lewis Dodd's going to get his chance next season um, to lead us to Wembley as, as our seven. So it's unfortunate for him, but as you say, hot day on Saturday, I think we go with a big bench. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think everything you've just said about Wellsby was exactly what I said about 10 seconds before. And... I've said it better. Uh, well, he said it a lot longer. Um, yeah, I think you're right, though. Big bench, you've got to have, um, whether it is LMS off the bench or Matty Lees. And the only reason I went with Lees off the bench is because he's still coming back from injury. Um, and I think with Louis, he just had last week off, so Louis can slot straight back in. Um, but yeah, Lee's you're looking at Parsley bringing a lot of um, a lot of energy off the bench as well. Uh, Amor just being the the solid, dependable kind of forward, just keep on carting the ball up um, at the forwards, try and tire them out. And as you say, Wellsby can slip into to play thirteen if need be. Um, and I think we we might seem kind of quite early as well because I think we will rotate our forwards quite a bit to try and keep them as fresh as possible. The only bonus from me, which see on my touty being suspended, is I'm not going to lose five pound on my first try score a bet. <laughs> the only time I didn't put him on is the one he scored this season. So first try scorer for Saints on Saturday, Kevin Morgan Knowles. 
Is that for because of the symmetry of 2019 getting the one disallowed? Something something will come up that's either a video ref decision that they've gone to and is debatable or they don't go to it. There'll be something along them lines. So the easiest one to bet on is Morgan Knowles at 25 to 1. Good shout. Um, Lance Todd. I know I'm going for... Johnny, Lom- Johnny Lomax. I'm going for Mark Percival. I think he's going to have a... A world of a game. He's he's shown in the last couple of games coming back. He's 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 getting back to showing his best, and I just think Saturday's going to be perfect for him. So, Mark Percival for me. So we're assuming we're going to win. And, and, um, and he had a he had a nice bonus ten minutes, which wasn't his fault. He had a ten minute rest against Wakefield, so it meant he only played seventy, which wasn't his fault. It was just the team kept giving penalties away, and he was the last one to do it before the card came out. So maybe that was the master plan. <laughs> Great plan, like like card Jenga. Yeah, I think is that the right game where you pull the things out. Yeah, was that or or is that pop up pirates? Or is that pop up pirates? Oh, that's where you put the swords in the thing, isn't it? Oh, well. yeah. get on to cast squad. T- tell I don't buy the kids presents. Oh yeah, okay, cast squad. I can get it up. Oh, ah, there we go. Um, it's a miracle, Kev. They're all back. Yeah. Um, they've been in a bubble. They've had games called off, but they have managed to get to Wembley. Um, really strong squad. Um, probably not far off the the best, if not the best squad they they can put out. Yeah, and that's it. They've got some. Some canny operators in there as well. Peter Vitalski, Michael <coughs> Shenton, Jake Truman, Liam Watts, Paul McShane. Um, they've got a load of players who've been around the block and have uh, kind of played in big games. We'll know what it's like to lose them. Uh, and what, again, like us, we'll be kind of feeding off that. Um, our grand final winning halfback as well in there, Jordan Turner. Um, yeah, that's it. Listen, they did what they felt they had to do by putting the kids out against Salford and, and pretty much made Salford safe with them them racking up 70. It is what it is, isn't it? I mean, this it's, is, it, it, it's Kevin, not a great look for the comp, but... It's not, but at the end of the day, if you're a Castleford fan and, and they bring the cup home on Saturday... You don't care, yeah. No, 100% absolutely you don't not. Care. No, not at all. And they'll do and the right it. thing. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So, I've, do you know what? I've got no issues with what Castleford did. It peeves no, you that we play a full side and we get pinged by with a suspension. But listen, I'd have got, I'd have gone personally. I'd have done what Castleford did because yeah, no, at the end of the day, you, they've took the variables away, haven't they? They've not risked yeah. um, any COVID infection in the camp, and they've not risked suspension. So, listen, fair play. Is the risk with them that they've, they're going to really come in under cup though? Like we did probably in yeah. 2019 with someone coming back. Yeah, as I say, 24th of June last time they played. Um, I think it was against Catalan. Um, and since then, they've had games called off, not been able to raise teams. Had another one where they had a team ready, but was it Huddersfield called off against them? Um, yeah, their issue is minutes. It's just minutes. It's all very well having big opposed training sessions and and kind of we're going to run it almost as a match. There's no um, there's no substitute for actually playing. You see it with players, as you say, 2019 when our players weren't sharp, come back from injury, all in a cup final, all on a big pitch, all with it warm. It it wasn't a good look, was it? So it's. And, and but that was a tough call in 2019 because you don't leave that type of player out. But yeah, the the worry is while they might have rested up and and rested a lot of their bumps and bruises and what have you, just not having played for a month might might just sap a lot of energy out of them, especially in the last 20 minutes. It's going to be like 26, 27, 28 degrees on Saturday. It'll be tough for them to maintain it. Fair play if they do, because that means they're doing something right behind the scenes. Yeah, obviously, since Castleford played on the 8th of May against Salford in the in the Cup, where they won by that golden point, 
They've only actually won two of their last nine. One of those was obviously uh, Warrington in the semi-final and the other coming uh, a scrappy 18-12 victory away at Wakefield. So they're not in the best of form, are they? Again, they've, they've lost the last three. Um, does winning well, you see that. or losing become a habit? Well, you say that, but it's that long ago since the first team have had a game. Do we know what form they're in? Do we know if they're hot or not in training? They might have to go through training sessions all week and not drop a ball. So they might be really, I believe, really Kev, I believe, Kev, Cass have lost the last five in training, which is a feat in itself because they're playing themselves. <laughs> but yeah, you, you just don't know, do you? You just you wonder about the culture of, of, even though it's the kids getting absolutely tom because you get beaten and have 70 put on you. Um that's your first team getting beat. Whether doesn't matter who's got who's in the shirts and what name and numbers on the back of it. That's your first team. They're representing the first team of your club. And you do wonder sometimes how that kind of seeps in. A player's bothered. They turn around and go, it doesn't matter, it wasn't us. Or does some of them are some of them like oh, I don't really like that? I'd have played to be fair. I think most of them would have played if they had the choice, but they've done the thing which they think is right by them. See, I disagree. Um, I don't think most of them would have played. Listen, they were all prepared Probably. to take the kids out of school and, and ruin their education for a week um, to ensure that they could play at Wembley. So there's no way they were going to be interested against playing against Salford. Yeah, I think. No, I still think they would have. I wonder, I Kev, if you, if you admit to removing your child from school for those reasons, does that count as Trivington? <laughs> no idea. They need, the, they need the Wembley win that. bonus to pay the fines. <laughs> Possibly. Uh, Possibly. Right, that said, uh, predictions for Saturday then? Say that again, you broke up. Predictions for Saturday? Uh, Saints by 14. I'm going to go Saints by one. Really? Because we win and anything after that's a bonus. Fair enough. I, don't, I, I literally don't care as long as we win. That's all that matters. Yeah. With the results on Saturday. Same, same. And I'll give reasons for saying about fourteen is basing it on Cass being undercooked and us having played minutes and and being a little bit match sharper. I think it'll be tough. I think it's not a game you want to be chasing. You don't want to be behind by two or three scores because I think if somebody gets two or three scores ahead and you start trying to chase the game and don't stick to a game plan, you're going to be knackered. A bit like we did against Warrington, where we started throwing the game plan out the window. Um, but I just think we'll move through the gears in the last kind of 20 minutes and do enough, probably like 70 and 72 minute scores for Saints to be uh, happy for the final eight minutes. Yeah, and, and do you know what? Again, you, you're right, Kevin. Uh, the biggest deficit that anybody has ever come back from in a Challenge Cup final um, do you know the answer? Ten points. The answer is... Are you ready? I'll give you a clue. 1996. Oh, right. Was it us against Bradford? It was us against Bradford. Oh, yeah. So there you go. So you do not want to be coming back from a deficit. How many points was that? 14 points. 14. And we won 40 points to 32, obviously. Uh, and we trailed 26-12 yeah. from the 53rd to the 57th minute in that game before the, the Bobby's bombs and the comeback yeah. was on. So, yes, if you go down by more than 14 points, history tells you you're not coming back. Yeah. So we're yeah, 16 nil down after the first 10 minutes, but we may as well go back to the green man. Aside from the game, Kev, obviously, Challenge Cup weekend, um, a chance for us all to get together and enjoy it. It's obviously not going to be a full house at Wembley, 45,000, but we will be in and about around the ground before the game, soaking up the atmosphere with the rest of the fans. Uh, hopefully, we think we're going to end up in the green man. Um, Possibly, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see. try and we'll catch see where we can get in. We'll try and catch some fans, do a, a few bits of interviews and, and try and record the day for posterity. And if we win, uh, we'll, we'll have it out on Red VTV. And if we lose, 
It'll be consigned to the trash can <laughs> forever and ever. It just as, never just see as the, the pre-match of, of the Warrington game was two years ago. <laughs> so if, if you were recorded on that day, that footage is lost forever. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. I don't know. You keep saying this, though. I think the game kicked off about 10 o'clock in the morning, didn't it? It did. It did for me, anyway. I was... Uh, well, where were you, Kevin? I was in the, I was in the Caribbean, yeah. <laughs> Somebody not this time round. Drinking champagne at 10 o'clock in the morning. So there you go, it's your fault. Your fault yeah. we lost. If, if you, you know if we'd have won in 2019, you'd have had to go back to the Caribbean this time round. Yeah, too right. Justin Holbrook ruined it for you. Right, I, don't know I how think I that's us there. done. Um, hopefully we'll catch a few of you in and around Wembley. Um, come say hi. Um, if you double jabbed and you were a negative lateral flow. <laughs> So everybody um, should have they should have yeah right don't forget to like share and subscribe and we will catch you at Wembley on Saturday for the Red V TV instant fan reaction hopefully we're just bouncing around like loons like we did in the grand final we'll see I'm driving so you'll be tanked up catch you soon <laughs>